Extraction of impacted lower wisdom teeth. This is not an easy procedure. And one of the, the things that comes of training in this area, I was in an oral surgery fellowship at Baylor College of Dentistry for two years before I took my training in complex restorative dentistry, is being able to recognize the difficulty of an extraction. This extraction is more difficult than a horizontal impaction. As a horizontal impaction, you just cut directly through the tooth, remove the mesial portion or the crown of the tooth, make a hole in the root section, pull them forward and pull them out. Horizontal impactions look difficult, but this is harder to me because it's wedged in here behind this tooth and the, the cut angle is more difficult or the angle of your cut. So here's the incision. You incise back into the retromolar area all the way to bone and then make another cut to the distal lingual of the second molar and cut all the way to bone and then you're going to cut just distal to the second molar, making a, creating a wedge and you'll t remove that piece with your rongiers. Then I'm going to reflect the flap. I'm removing that piece. And you want to be sure that you've got plenty of, of opening, that you, you have plenty of reflection so you can get to the tooth. Now I'm coming back with my scissors and just cutting all the way uh, through the soft tissue. Now you can see that wisdom tooth is exposed and in those cases you have to remove some bone. I try not to remove any bone or cut any bone if I can help it, but in those cases you know most of the time you're going to have to remove some bone and I'm making a cut in the bone and the tooth on the buccal aspect and this is just a long shank Brazilier round burr. You can see how I'm cutting a trough here on the buccal aspect of the tooth. It's extending it to the distal of the tooth because you've got to have a little space to elevate the distal portion of that tooth in two. If you don't have any space, you can't elevate it when it's angled forward like that tooth is. But this is why you want, you've got to reflect a pretty good flap. So you can see how the tooth is angled like this uh, directly into the distal of the second molar but you've got to create, create a little space. And what I'll do is cut both the bone and the tooth. So you've got something, you've got an area to, to elevate the distal aspect of the tooth into when you separate it with your burr here in just a minute. Now I'm cutting through the tooth and you want to cut all the way to the furcation, all the way to the furcation. So you've got to be, you want to, measure on your radiograph ahead of time how far it is to the frication because we want to be extremely aware of the inferior alveolar nerve. We don't want to traumatize that nerve. We certainly don't want to cut the nerve. We don't want to get anywhere close to it. And we also don't want to traumatize it. So I'm certain that I'm only going to the frication of this tooth. I'm trying to cut all the way through. You see I've cut all the way through from lingual to palatal. And now I'm using a 33 long shanked burr and making a purchase point in the mesial aspect of that tooth. I'm going to try to elevate it. See I'm making that purchase point just a hole in the tooth and I'm going to elevate it or attempt to elevate it with this instrument. And then I'm loosening it up, then I'm cutting this. Now I'm actually cutting through the mesial part of that tooth because you'll remember how it's wedged up underneath the second molar. So I'm cutting through this part right here so I can free it up and elevate it into the space I've created between the distal 
and the mesial aspect of the tooth when I cut all the way through the tooth. What I'm doing is separating the two pieces. And now, if you've cut all the way through the tooth, you can elevate the mesial aspect of the tooth into that space and the distal aspect, distal part of the tooth into the space. If you don't cut all the way through to the frication, though, you don't have a complete space to elevate into, and it will bind in the part of the tooth close to the frication. It won't be able to move freely. So I'm just cutting through the mesial part of the tooth. All right, now I'm separating the buccal root from the lingual root. The mesial buccal root from the mesial lingual root. I'm going to take them out in two parts. And this is just an elevator. I'm just separating the parts. And you don't want to put too much pressure. You know, if you haven't applied very much pressure at all, you want to uh, remove some more tooth structure to make more space. So the pieces are now moving, but they won't quite separate. So I'm just removing very carefully a little more tooth structure. So I'm separating again the mesial buccal root from the mesial lingual root, removing those in two parts, and I've also separated the distal root from the mesial buccal and the mesial lingual roots. So I'm going to have three pieces here. Let's see them moving. Let's see the two, and here come the other parts. Just be, be patient. Now I've got I've really removed very little bone, very little bone. I've mainly cut the tooth into pieces and lifted those out in three parts. Now you're going to irrigate the socket so that any remaining small pieces come out, and then we're going to pack it with resorbable gauze with dry socket paste and topical anesthetic. And this is socket paste and Topax topical anesthetic. This is Surgicel uh, absorbable gauze, or there, there are other resorbable gauzes you can use. This is just a very good one. And I'm going to put the paste on the gauze. Now, I always do this if I've had to cut bone. I always do this, pack the socket, if I've had to cut bone. I don't do it in the maxillary. I just do it in the man, my mandibular. Maxillary wisdom teeth I never pack. Just place that in there, and this is going to hold the blood clot in place so you don't get a dry socket. In 36 years of practice, I've never gotten, knock on wood, a dry socket because I do this anytime I have to cut the bone uh, with a mandibular uh, molar extraction. Then you're going to suture it tight with 3-0 gut suture and take a big bite. And your first suture is going to be on the mesial part of the incision. And then the second suture will be about mid-incision. And these sutures will dissolve in three to seven days. Now, seven days is the key time for the connective tissue lining to reform in the socket. That's why you get a dry socket. Those nerve endings are exposed for seven days, and if you lose part of the socket, the nerve endings are exposed, and they're hyper, hypersensitive. So if you pack the socket, you maintain the blood clot for seven days, and you don't get a dry socket. I'm suturing that tight. Normally, I just place one suture for a maxillary wisdom tooth, but I normally, I quite often place two for a mandibular. You can see now I've gone back about mid-incision, and again, take a big bite. If you don't, the suture will pull out, will pull through. So the main thing here is you want to be very conscious of the inferior alveolar nerve. Now, when the patient returns in seven days, we're going to rinse the socket with a monoject syringe with half uh, mouthwash and half lukewarm water. And I tell the patient, take the tip of the syringe right down the center of the teeth in front of the extraction site, and there'll be a hole behind the second molar, and just place that tip in the hole. When they're using the monoject syringe, they don't press hard. What they're doing is irrigating anything in the socket up to the surface. There'll always, almost always be a small hole there 
into which they can place that tip. And they're not trying to press hard and uh, car wash it out of there. You just want to float everything in the socket to the top and then spit, they'll spit it out. And I tell them to do this once a day before they go to bed. So you can see that hole is almost always there after seven days. And that's the Dental Minute. Hey y'all, I know you loved this episode of the Dental Minute. Make sure you press subscribe if you have not already and get fired up because next week we are talking about mini implants to secure a maxillary denture. You will not want to miss this episode. See you next week.